Welcome back, guys, to Kerbal Space Explosion. Today is the day that you have all been waiting for. Today's the day that I've been waiting for for months. I was dreaming of this mission for weeks and weeks before I even started working on it, and it has been a ton of work designing all these ships. Is it going to work? Will we ever get to Jewel? These answers will be answered today, because today... Computron, the assembled gestalt form of the five technobots. He departs Kerbin for Jewel and his little uh, Nebulon headmasters are in their piloting seats. Hudat, Hans, Tombal, Dundred, and Merlong. So uh, this thing is going to be wobbly and hard to fly maneuvering it. And twisting it around to get to the, the vector, you know, the direction we need to go in, it's going to be very hard. <laughs> I don't imagine, even if we do get to Jewel, it will be easy. But we're going to try. We're going to try our best. Hopefully it flies straight. And I think with the little tiny amounts of thrust we're going to be giving it, we can leave the solar panels out. Uh, they will not be under threat of breaking off once again. If you're new to this little mini-series within my Kerbal Space Explosion series, we have made analogs to the Generation 1 Transformer toys, the Technobots, who were scientists, and they all formed one giant robot called Computron. So, the five different ones are... Uh, up here, we've got Lightspeed, who's like a, a futuristic race car... Right here, we've got Nose Cone. Right here, this guy. Nose Cone, he's like a tanky drill thing. That I guess he's like a geologist or something. He drills for minerals. Here we've got Scattershot, the leader of the Technobots. He forms the torso for the toy when they formed, when they merged to form Computron. So this is Scattershot. He's like a spaceship. Over here, we have Afterburner. He's kind of hard to see. He's on the other side of the sun in the shade. He is a motorcycle. I use the giant wheels, though, so he's humongous. He's the biggest motorcycle you've ever seen. And then on the back here, probably the coolest looking one, is Strafe, who is a, like a jet fighter kind of guy. Here, let's turn on some lights. I have a lot of lights on this thing. And that drops my frame rate from 5 frames per second to 4 frames per second. So we're not going to turn those on. We'll turn those on when we only have to load one of these in the game engine at a time. Okay, so, the object is to get to Jewel, and each one of these guys is headed for one of Jewel's moons. Uh, we need to get to Jewel. If we can get to Jewel, even if it takes all the fuel in this guy, I will con consider that a success, because consider this. We can get to Jewel, or, or if, hypothetically, we get to Jewel, even if we're totally out of fuel, I can leave them all kind of hanging out on the five moons, and I can send up another one of these things and send it off towards Jewel. And without these five guys hanging off of Computron, Computron's uh, like evil twin doppelganger that will send to rescue them, it will get there with much less fuel. And then we don't need to bring any of them back. We just need to bring back the uh, the Nebulons here, the Kerbins. Uh, I don't plan to bring back all of these ships because I don't think that we will have enough fuel for that. A lot of these guys are going to be left in the Julian system. Okay, so step one. We're on Carbon. We need to get all the way to Jewel. It's super duper far away. Let's zoom out. We've got some asteroids there. We've got, between us and it, we've got Duna and Drace. And to help out, I'm going to try to use some gravity assists with the moon and pot uh, pot potentially with Duna if it is in a convenient place by the time we get to that point. So we're in orbits around this uh, this sun here, Kerbal. We need to increase our speed. We need to go to the right. We need to go this way. So ordinarily, I would start to burn like this way. I would burn in this direction to increase our orbit in that direction, right? Okay, simple stuff. But I want to use the moon as a gravity assist. So I, maybe this is a bad time to start experimenting with gravity assist. I think what we need to do, we need to burn kind of like out here. So we get to the moon here. We're going to get to it here. 
and then we're going to swing around and shoot off that way. Hopefully, that's the plan. Um, so to do that, we need to basically time accelerate until the moon is round about over here. Uh, by the time you, uh, you get to the moon, it will have moved a quarter of the way around its orbit. I'm pretty sure. I haven't been to the moon in a while, but let's just check. If I go, for instance, like this. I bet we're going to run into the moon. We're going to have an encounter. Yep, see right there. Okay, so it will travel a quarter of the way around its orbit by the time you get to it. And you see, just by going out here, look what happened to our overall orbit. That's a gravity assist. That's what we want. So I was coming out this way, and it ended up shooting me way out that way. We're going to do the same thing. So, uh, simple enough, right? <laughs> Should be no problem. We just need to time accelerate until... Let's see. Let's find the sun. So the sun is there. We need the moon here. We're going to go out here and then shoot out that way. No, no. We want the moon here. We're going to go out here. So by the time we get here, it will have traveled from here to there. Time accelerate. Faster. So we're going to go bloop and swing out super fast that way, hopefully. All right. Here's the maneuver. There's the sun. Here we are. We're going to come out here and swing out. And then after we do this initial burn, this puts our descending node at 0.2 degrees or negative 0.2 degrees, so that's pretty close. After we do this initial burn of six minutes-ish, uh, we'll do an adjustment so that we can get as close to the moon as possible. Right now, uh, we're a little bit too close. Actually, we don't. I think we're gonna crash into it. Yeah, so we need to fix that. We also need to fix our ejection angle so that we are flat, so that we can hopefully use Duna as an intermediary. But one thing at a time. So, we have an estimated burn of 5 minutes, 50 seconds. I'm going to start at about 3 minutes. I'm going to turn off the time acceleration. I would normally cut this pretty close, but because this ship is so big, has so many parts, I'm actually going to cut it right now. It's going to take a <laughs> it takes a few seconds for the game to adjust the time when there's this many parts. You can look up here, you can keep track of how fast the game is actually running, this second clock should be running in actual seconds, not like one tick for every four or five real-world seconds. So the game is having a hard time keeping up. We have 40 seconds until we go. The only thing I'm a little worried about is are we going to be thrusting into Kerbal, our Kerbin, into Kerbin itself, and are we going to decay our orbit so much that um, this maneuver won't work? I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to try it anyway. We have another minute. Hopefully, I'm just going to keep an eye on, uh, I will keep an eye on our periapsis. It'll start swinging around when we start this. And if we have to do this uh, a little bit less than optimally, we will. This is probably not the best time. I should have experimented earlier with gravity assists, with ships that were more capable of doing this type of thing. Uh, with fewer parts where lag wouldn't have been as big of a deal. I should have done that, but I didn't. This is how we do things. We come up with a plan and it spirals out of control. And it ends up much larger, more complicated than I thought, but I think it's kind of worth it with this. This thing is crazy. Will it fly straight? I don't know. We're about to find out. I don't know that either. All right, 30 seconds to go. I'm a little bit nervous. This has been a lot of work to get to this point, and if the thing doesn't even fly straight, I'm not sure <laughs> what we're going to do. Hopefully, we have enough fuel to get there, but let's just take things one step at a time. One step at a time. Let me make a little adjustment. I think we're going to be okay. Let's, ju let's just think positive. So if we... We shoot straight this direction. Hmm. Well, we'll just we'll just keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll modify it as things go. All right, 20 seconds to go. Let me go just I'm going to do a minor I'm going to do 10 seconds worth of time acceleration here because the game is running so slowly. Okay, just that. That'll give us a few seconds. 
for the game to uh, get back up to speed. All right, here we go. Here's the test. Is it going to fly straight? Let's go ahead and get going. And let's make sure none of the other, none of the, uh, none of the other engines are activated so they're not firing and throwing us off course. I'm going to go right to about there. We don't want the nuclear engines overheating. Okay, it's tilting to the right a little bit. Fight with it. And we're recovering electrical charge, so all the, the reaction wheels are being compensated in terms of electrical charge by the nuclear engines generating electrical charge. And it's flying fairly straight. It's doing basically what I want. It's kind of wanting to go to the right. Our periapsis is dropping, but I think we're going to be okay. It's not dropping very fast. And we're basically on target. Ooh, oh, it, it did that slow. So the way this interplanetary stage is going to work, we've got these Rocco Max X-232 fuel tanks. It's going to take a while to, to empty those, but once they're empty, they will drop off. They will stage. I may have to look at the staging, actually. Ooh, yeah, I'll have to look at the staging before we do that. Oh, now it's wanting to go off-center. Wrestle with it. I may have to stop and, like, correct if it if it goes too far out of that circle if it keeps going it's really it's really going off center now come back mom back i did not update the staging you see all, all this mess here from the other ships i uh, i kind of need to do that actually um so hopefully we can get through this initial burn without needing to do that and then we can worry about that later okay it's coming back it's coming back so I'm going to have to wrestle with it, but it does look like it's going to work, kind of. Um, let's look at our periapsis. It has only come down one kilometer. So that's good. I think we're going to be all right there. I'll keep checking up on that. Oh, boy. Come on. Come on. Fly straight. Straight as an arrow. <laughs> Tip up. Tip up. So, yeah, uh, I, we overcompensated a little bit. Ooh, we should keep uh, an eye on the docking clamps. One thing I did have to do, every time I flew one of these guys up here to dock, I had to undock and redock multiple times off camera to get both of these docking clamps for each one to dock at the same time. That was kind of finicky and a little frustrating. Uh, I need to look... I need to keep an eye on the torque. Like, things like this. Uh, if this car gets too, like if the angle gets too far from 90 degrees, I'll, I probably need to cut the engines and let things reset for a bit. But so far we've been burning for, oh, not that long, like 30 seconds. Um, but nothing has broken yet. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. How much fuel have we used up? Uh, Barely any. Okay, I think we might be okay then. Whoop! And let's let things reset. Cut the engines for a second. You see it, everything kind of wobbling. And I'm kind of worried if I time accelerate and then time accelerate down. Okay, and then we can hit the engines again. Hopefully nothing broke. Nothing break, please. Nothing break. All right, well, for better or for worse, here we come. We've got about an hour of game time until we come within a razor's edge of the surface of the moon. Now, I I was getting a little frustrated trying to make adjustments to my orbit and get this exactly right, and I so I lift, looked up some information on Gravity Assist and KXP, and it turns out that, uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's less efficient to use the moon for a gravity assist to go outside of Kerbin's sphere influence than it is to just burn from the get-go from a low orbit of Kerbin, and that's due to the Oberth effect. Uh, the Oberth effect states that your, your rockets are more effective when you're traveling fast than when you're traveling slow. They can add to your speed in a more efficient manner, and you're going fastest at your periapsis, or, you know, the closest yard to the planet, or whatever you're orbiting. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? 
Uh, this is what we're going to end up with. We've burnt out to, to the moon with a few adjustments. And we're going to end up at about not quite twice that distance. Is that a useful use of our fuel? Uh, probably not. But hey, we're not here to do things the efficient way. We're here to just uh, fly by the seat of our pants. I had never done one of these before, so let's do one. Yeah, why not? Let's do a speed up effect until we get close. Plus, this is going to look awesome flying this massive thing. <laughs> Super duper close. Now, there is... Uh, I, one of the other things I looked up is... The highest mountain on the moon, and it's somewhere around 7,500 meters. I actually think that's the poles are that high. And we are going to go down to 7,000 meters. I think we're going to be okay, though. Let's speed up again. Nothing has broken so far. It flies mostly straight. I have to wrestle with it, and I have to cut the power every once in a while to let things, you know shake off their their swiveliness okay now let's here we come we still have the same information right it didn't change on us no no where'd the moon go moon crap where'd the moon go oh <laughs> it's right there oh god it's getting really close I thought about dialing down the distance all the way down to like 3 or 4K and just really tempting fate. Um, but I decided that wasn't such a good idea, all things considered. Okay, we've got four minutes. I want to fly by in real time once we get closer. So let's do basically like this so that we can see. Yeah, that's good enough. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Real time flyby. Ooh, oh gosh. It takes the uh <laughs> the game just oh wow, it looks like we're about to fly into the surface. Well, I'm gonna turn off the UI for this. This is still on though. Turn off, get out of here. Go away. Go away, text. There we go. This is actually pretty serene. I feel nice and peaceful. The uh, the frame rate isn't so hot. I've got, personally, I've got seven frames per second. And let's watch this. Seven. Seven. Eight. Okay, so that's like five real-world seconds per in-game second ticking by. Let's, uh, let's do a time acceleration. If we go to five times... Time acceleration, that's essentially going to be real time, right? Six, seven, it's slightly faster than reality. Nine, 10, 11, but it's much closer. So we can actually just float on by like this. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that view. What's the, what's the most cinematic angle we can pick? Something like that. Yeah, there we go. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Flying to the left, though, the uh, the Western Mind. Oh, look at that. There's an arch. That's one of the uh, the Easter eggs for the game. We found one. That arch. There's several of them on the moon, and that's one of them. Well, there's our flyby of of the moon. I actually have an additional idea for squeezing just a little bit more efficiency out of this maneuver. Okay, so we, we saw the most that we're going to see. Let's go ahead and escape from the moon's sphere of influence. So let's warp out here. Oh, okay, we got to we gotta wait. We got to wait, moon. Whoa! <laughs> we shot up close to that thing quickly. Okay, here we go. Accelerating away. In, in uh, temporal terms here, up to 100 times. This ship is massive. Okay, now we can go a bit faster, and then we can see what our new orbit is. Uh, we can already see it, of course. It's the, the yellow line. And I'm going to slow down right now. Okay. So, this is what... Whoa. Time, okay, yes. 
So this is what we ended up with, with the amount of fuel we've spent so far. And we didn't quite escape from Kerbin's sphere of influence yet. This mission isn't gonna be very successful if we can't even do that. So I have an idea. What if we'd grabbed our apoapsis here and brought our periapsis down into a gravity shift, a gravity assist with Kerbin. Is that possible? Maybe not. I thought that would be possible, but maybe it's not. It gave us like a little estimated one. What what happened? What was that doing? Oh, I see. With just a little bit of... Where did it go? I just saw it. Where are you at? Oh, come on. Oh, stupid lag. What happened to my... There it is. Come back. My maneuver node disappeared for a second. There it is. Right there. Oh, we can get another gravity assist. Uh, now, the tricky thing here is to see, do we have a moon or periapsis? Ooh, we do! And we can get a second one. And that can send us out of here. Now, what's the... The delta V to affect this change is only 52 seconds. I think we may have something here. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to get it as efficient as possible. And then we're going to do a second flyby. How about that? All right, here we come for our second flyby. Hothead, Hans, Tomble, Dundred, and Merlong. Are you ready, my Technobots? I still actually have a little bit of fuel left in these guys right here. We're not ready to jettison them just yet. We can do another flyby. And I guess when we start our burn towards Jewel itself, we'll get to jettison them to dramatic fashion and start to diminish the part count on this absurdly complicated and over-designed rocket. Here we come. Here we come, Moon, ready or not. This time, let's just do the whole thing from this screen. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, let's slow down a bit. But let's keep the sped up animation effect because it looks crazy. It, oh my god, it looks like we are about to crash into it. But we're not. We're going to fly right over the top. There is Kerbin right there, the planet. and we're Wow, look at that shot. Oh my goodness. Oh, and we uh, we got slowed down. <laughs> yes. Even if it's not efficient, I don't care. It's fun. It's fun. And that's enough. That's all that matters, really. And the game is hating my guts right now, trying to keep up with all of this information. But looks like we're not going to bash into it. In just a second, we will start to recede away from it. Yeah, I think that was the closest point just there. Pretty good. Pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and speed up. Oh, we can't yet. Let's speed up. Let's get out of the moon sphere of influence and then out of Kerbin sphere of influence. And let's see just what our orbit is going to be. Hopefully, we will be farther away from the sun then Kerbin is, or, you know, our, our apoapsis will be farther out. That is my hope. Uh, but in any case, we managed to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence for a little bit more than the fuel that it takes to get to the moon. We, may, we may be, maybe spent maybe like 1.5 times that amount of fuel. So we'd, we probably saved some, I hope. In the long run, I don't know. Maybe it would have been safe, or not safe, but more efficient to just do the whole burn uh, right there. But oh well. Okay, there's that one. And here we go in our escape. Any day now. Any second now. There's Tylo, Bob, Vol, uh, Leith, and the other one. Paul. Paul, right? One of them. I don't know. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, slow down. Slow down to one times. And let's take a look. Let's zoom out as soon as the game catches up with what we're doing. Let's look at what we did. 
Oh yeah, we're most of the way to Duna. And we have a lot of fuel left. I suddenly feel a little bit better about what we're doing. Okay, so next time, we are going to try to burn the rest of the way to Jewel and arrow break in its atmosphere to get into an orbit around it. Hopefully that's possible too. We'll find out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Let's get back up here into the, the good view here. And I'm going to do a quick save just in case. There we go. We made it this far. See you later. Take it easy. Have a good day. Bye-bye.